Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to spray the Plasti Dip rubber coating over a panel. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating that on this Toyota Hilux bonnet here, or otherwise known in America as a hood. We get a few guys saying, what the hell is a bonnet? Um, that's what we refer to a hood as here in Australia. Okay, so we pulled the bonnet off. We just decided that it's just going to be a little bit easier for us, uh, a little bit less masking. Um, just there's only four bolts and then you've just got a couple of little um, washer jet lines that we pulled them off and put the uh, hood straight into the booth here so I started off by giving it a really good clean down um, that was just with normal old car wash just a bucket of water and car wash I'm then just getting a nice clean dry rag and wiping the bulk of the water off that was left behind this is going to be removing any contaminants, any water based contaminants anyway so any dirt and any pollen and just that kind of stuff that you get on your car um, so after that I'm going to be getting my high pressured air getting it, giving it a good blowout because I don't want any of that air, um, water to be in the, um, in the joins and the cracks and the crevices of the bonnet now, if you're just doing this at home, um, you may want to do it a little bit differently to this. Um, I know that a lot of people just buy aerosol cans of this plastic dip. However, um, we decided, well, we may as well do it properly and get a 4 litre can of this stuff and put it through our spray gun. Um, it definitely is a little bit different than spraying um, normal paint, but I'm going to do my best to uh, take you guys through every single step to get the best results. So once I've got it dried right down, I'm happy it's nice and dry, I'm going to be wiping it down with some methylated spirits which is just 96% alcohol and on the can it says to um, clean panel prior to application with alcohol. So uh, look, to be honest, I can't see any reason why just normal wax and grease remover wouldn't work and I'm 99% sure it would work, but hey, we had some metho there so we thought we might as well just do it according to the um, uh, specifications. Um, so same as if you are to use wax and grease remover, just wipe on and wipe off. Basically you don't want any um, a film in between um, the panel and the paint because that will uh, stop it from sticking. Well, as you guys may know, this stuff's not really meant to stick, it's meant to peel off anyway. So obviously give it a really good stir. Um, the uh, product that I'm using, it's called Performix um, and just plastic it. There are loads of different uh, wrap companies out there. Um, this one was, it cost us $250 for that um, 4 litre can and that was pre thinned. I think it was 3.78 litre and that was already thinned down so it was quite expensive. Since then we've actually done a bit more research on it and we found out there's another company that they say that their stuff is better, it gets better coverage than this stuff. So we've actually ordered in a few more cans and anyone in the Perth area um, in the next sort of three or four weeks, if you want your bonnet or you want any panels on your car plastic dip, we can even do a full respray. Um, give us a holler. I've got a link to our um, Facebook page of my business, Spray Tech Refinishing, in my um, description to this video. So, as always, really give it a really good stir because um, it does settle down to the bottom. Um, and then, obviously, always filter it into the gun. Now, I read the back of this can and it had some crazy suction fed Binks gun that no one ever would ev even use. You can't even really buy them here in Australia. Um, and <clears throat> we just decided, well, yeah, we're not going to use exactly the same spray gun as what they said. I just thought I'll start off just with my normal colour gun. So this is a 1.4mm. Um, the spray gun I'm using is a Devilwis SGK. Um, otherwise known in, I think, America, it's called a FLG5, so finish in line uh, number 5 model. Um, now, I did find that this really isn't getting enough material on. Um, so, considering how thin it was, I'm a little bit surprised of the coverage. Um, I'm sort of used to using solvent-based and automotive paints and stuff like that, whereas this stuff, um, yeah, very poor coverage compared to the stuff I'm used to using. Um, you know, I wasn't too fussed about getting this first coat on a little bit dry. That can actually help with a few things. If you go and smash your first coat on 
too heavy, um, you do run the risk of having it sort of open up fish eyes and stuff like that. So that's why I just continued on with that first coat, even though I did realize straight away it was the wrong gun. As soon as I started spraying with it, I knew it just wasn't coming out right. There just wasn't enough material coming out. So you see, I just went into my box there and I grabbed out my uh, Anest Iwata Air Gunza. Um, yeah, by the NSI Water uh, Group, uh, AZ3 and 1.8mm is the fluid tip that's on it. So this is actually my primer gun. So you could probably use anything from sort of 1.8 to 2.2mm um, in hindsight. That would be what you'd want to be using. So there you go, the first coat. It's on nice and even, you know. It's not all stripey or anything, so, you know, that's probably how you'd actually want to get your first coat on anyway. Um... <coughs> So what, what's actually happening here is you can see that's going on real stripey. The reason why that gun, um, I've given it a full strip down and a really good clean out. Sometimes you can actually end up dislodging something out of the gun and it will actually sit down in the gun. Um, it actually stopped it from working. So I decided just to give you guys a look at me spraying it out, cleaning it out, the air cap, and then you can see there it's now spraying properly again. So I just decided to include that because there's some people that told me that they liked me to include some of the troubleshooting. And yeah, basically 99% of the time, if your spray gun's not spraying properly, it's going to be the air cap. Um, apart from that, if you can't just give the air cap a good clean out, you may have to just pull the whole gun right down, give it another good clean out, um, and then hopefully it's going to go. Uh, but anyway, back to the job. So, yeah, this is our second coat. We're starting to try and get some coverage now. Um, I end up putting four coats on this, um, and you'd probably want to put, say, four or five coats if you're doing something like this with a nice decent size nozzle on it um, and that is just this specific product um, you may find if you're using a different one that has better coverage or something like that you may find that only three coats is um, enough you know um, but yeah this just with this Performix brand um, yeah overpriced and underperforms to be honest in my opinion um, yeah two hundred fifty dollars for four liters it's really not that cheap I reckon I could and all in all you'll see at the very end um, I ended up using about two liters of it, so it's about $125 worth of uh, plastic dip just on that one hood there. Um, if I was to say paint this, um, I'll just be weighing up sort of the options that I had. So I'd pull the hood off anyway. All I'd have to do is there's a few bolts around that um, scoop there. I'd put pop the washer jets out. I'd sand it down, which doesn't really take much longer. And I'll probably only be putting $100 worth of. Um, uh, paint on it instead of 125 um, don't forget that when I do get onto this cheaper stuff that price is going to come down um, pros of it is that if this guy decides you know what I'm selling this car and I might be able to get better resale value with it if it's white it's easy to pull off so there's definitely pros and cons to using this stuff um, I must say when I first heard about it and when I first saw it I thought it's a bit of a gimmick, you know, but I I actually have turned my thinking around, and I, I think it does have a um, a good use. Um, yeah, for stuff like you know, if you just want to have matte black rims or something like that, buy a couple of cans. Anyone can do it at home. Don't forget, it still is um, solvent based paint, so you really must um, use good eye protection, eye protection, breathing protection, gloves, and paint suit. You really don't want to get this stuff all over you. You don't want to be breathing it in and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, make sure you do observe all your PPE, correct PPE. So here we go with our third coat. Taking note that in between each coat, I'm allowing time to dry. How do I know it's dry? Because there's no gloss to it. I bought the, um, the matte version of it. Now, this, these products do come in many different colors. Um, they've got pearls, they've got full gloss. Um, I'm yet to go that far down. This was actually my first time using the Plasti Dip. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be more, loads more Plasti Dip coming. Let me know what you guys would like to see. If you've got any ideas of things for me to paint, um, yeah, basically, my life revolves these days around this uh, channel. I Today is uh, Good Friday 2015. What am I doing on my day off? I went in to work today and I made, like, three or four videos for you guys um, 
stuffing around with the airbrush, having fun. Um, I've got some videos coming on respirators, I've got some videos coming on orange peel and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, you guys make this channel what it is at the end of the day. If you guys didn't watch my videos, give me the thumbs up and subscribe, well then I wouldn't have the motivation to do what I do. And it's just great to be able to share my love of this trade. And I would like to also say that I myself have learnt a lot since I have started this channel as well. So it's not just about sharing with you, it's about me as well. Like I um, I do love doing this stuff and it's, it's great that I'm able to learn, even if it be off you guys making a comment, um, doing my own research and stuff like that. So yeah, it's just great. So there we go. You can see that that's three coats on there, which would usually I would expect to get coverage after three coats. However, I can still quite, I can still actually see through that. Um, it's not 100% see-through, but there is still um, some patches that aren't quite uh, covered there. So on this last coat, I'm just going to smash it on, and then hopefully that's going to be covered, and it turned out that it is. Um, so I'm going to actually give you guys a look at how to peel this stuff off later on too, at the end of the video. Um, as, as it just turned out, just, for in, just by uh, chance... Um, I work in this big set of unit blocks here in Bayswater, Western Australia, Perth, and um, the guys from across the road just so happened to be removing Plasti Dip on exactly the same day that I was spraying it for the first time. So I decided to walk across the road and see how they were going with um, with the removal of it, and uh, that was only on for say two months or so. So. Um, you know, in the future I might be, um, this guy might come back to us in, say, a year and say, you know, I want this pulled off now. So I'll make another video, I'll uh, see how it goes over a longer period as well and see how you go peeling it off. Um, also, just take note that um, with those washer jets, you've got your little um, uh, squirter hole. Uh, I did just put a little bit of tape over the back of that too, just so we don't build up too much in there and then when you go to use your washer jets, it's not going to work. Um, we threw out the idea of pulling the jets out and the um, and the scoop off, but we just thought, well, all that's going to mean is that you've got to pull it off when you go to peel it off. So we just thought this is probably going to be the easiest way, and it'll give you just as good as a finish. Um, yeah, I'll uh, also give you guys a look at just um, overspray underneath. I kind of deliberate. I knew I was going to get a little bit of overspray underneath, but um, I just thought, hey, I'll leave it on. There. I'll get it on there just to see how it comes off, so I can show you guys how it comes off. So. Uh, coming up to an end, that's our last coat. That's it when it's sort of semi dried down, just started to dry down. You can tell there, uh, you can see it's um, sort of more glossy when it's uh, wet and then it dries down to a matte finish. And yeah, I mean, it's it's not 100% perfect by my standards, but it's something that I'm, I'm happy with anyway. Um, you just got to be careful with this stuff, just uh, even the next couple of days, it still stays a bit rubby, so if you've got sort of dusty and dirty hands and stuff like that, try not to just rub the panels over. Um, yeah, I decided to give you guys a little bit of a look at cleaning a gun out. Um, just a little bit of an extra in here for you guys. Um, if you're doing it in your garage or something, obviously you might not have a setup like this, but I made this um, little gun cleaner myself. It's just a sink on top of a 20-litre um, a drum and a bit of a recycled system there, so... Um, there you go, that's half of that, so, yeah, um, half of that can. There's definitely quite a fair bit of material going on to there, but, um, hopefully the owner's going to be happy with, uh, the results. The reason he wanted to do this is because, um, you'll see here, up on the top, uh, header over the, um, roof of his car on the header board, um, he's got a big spotlight, LED spotlight, and, um, Basically what ended up happening is at night time he was just getting killer glare coming off the bonnet from the um, from the uh, spotlight and it was just sort of blinding him so he just thought give me some matte black and um, yeah hopefully it's going to work the job uh, quite well for him. So there you go there's a bit of um, removal of the overspray from underneath it comes off quite easy it looks pretty nice it sort of doesn't look out of place it sort of suits the rest of the car. Um, all up, we charge this guy $200, um, and in, going into the future, if we manage to, this is a friend of um, my business partner, so we did look after him, basically just did the labour for stuff all, and then, yeah, 
made him pay for the materials. Um, in the future, we might be able to um, yeah, do around the $200 mark per panel too for this kind of um, finish. So, as I said at the start, make sure you do give us a holler if you want any paint work done in the Perth area. Um, and there you go with the removal of it. Now, they were having a bit of trouble initially getting that stuff off, and that was only three months. So, um, he said he, he read our can and it said to spray some solvent over it. It's, it's actually smelled a bit like a bit of an orange, whatever they, these guys use. Smelt like a bit of an orange sort of a flavour more than a solvent, but I'm sure you'd just be able to um yeah, find some sort of a cleaner to spray it to soften it up a bit, then you get your high pressure hose and hopefully it should blast straight off. Um so there you guys go. He's got himself a nice looking um bonnet on his uh Toyota Hilux. Um hope you guys have enjoyed this movie. If you guys would like to see a couple more different uh paint reviews and demos, I really do recommend checking out that Standox and Metalux review and demo. In the future, I'm gonna be doing loads more. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.